I'm going to turn the audio off, but uh, this is an uh, just a um, proposal for maybe some extra credit. I'm kind of struggling in my online classes right now. So uh, if anyone's watching this right now, uh, learn something and enjoy it. And hopefully um, I'll pass my classes and graduate and get out of here and live my life and we'll all <laughs> be back together soon after this crazy, crazy virus. So I'm going to... Um, I'm just going to come in and out and maybe say a thing or two that I can remember um, from what I've learned online. Uh, I'm currently working on writing a paper um, regarding the Elgin marbles and if they should return, be returned to the Parthenon. So, um, we'll go in. We'll start with the Acropolis, which is um, where the Parthenon is located. So according to some speculation, and what little is certain about the time Thomas Byron's actions in removing the marbles were considered legal in 1802, when the marbles were removed with a firman ordered by the Ottoman government. There are many questions surrounding the legitimacy of the Furman. I've been kind of stumped on this paper and uh, how I should uh, organize it, but there has to be, um, I have to make three, I have to have three arguments for why the marble should be returned to the um, Parthenon. As th that's the stance I'm taking, at least. Um, we had the option to um, either be in support or against the re return of the marbles. is another thing that is uh, not going to be addressed in this gameplay, but is a main part of the paper that I'm writing. The firm in that um, Thomas Byron received from the Ottoman government. Greetings, wanderer, and welcome to the Acropolis, the shining jewel of Athens. You're confident enough for a test? Very well. Let us see how much you know. Which two gods competed for Athens' patronage? Correct. It was mm -hmm. Poseidon and Athena who fought for Athens' patronage. As for who won, the answer is in the city's name. On to the next question. Who sculpted the statue of Athena in the Parthenon? What was the question? <laughs> Sorry. Who sculpted the statue of Athena in oh, the Parthenon? Oh, Correct. The renowned sculptor Phidias made the statue, which was considered one of his masterpieces. And now, the final question. Which king's tomb was believed to be under the Cariatid porch? Uh, that is correct. Cecrops was the mythological first king of Athens, and his tomb was said to be under the Erechtheion. It seems you know much about this place. 
Well done, Wanderer. Personally, I think the Acropolis is one of, if not the, though, considering it was the... Yeah, whatever, okay. Let's begin the tour. The Acropolis of Athens is a bastion of art uh, and culture worthy of the gods themselves. Nice. Within this citadel, you will find many important sacred buildings, as well as some of the most magnificent art in all of Greece. You are in for a very enlightening visit. When you're done, come find me, and we can discuss the things you have seen. Farewell for now. Okay. I'm just gonna read what I have written down for my rough draft on and off throughout this. Uh, hopefully it doesn't take too much time, and um, hopefully I don't get bored of it. Because <laughs> this, this game is not really... The Acropolis has gone through many changes in its long history. It began as a simple rock, was settled as early as the Neolithic period, and then became a fortress in the Mycenaean period. Stone buildings started appearing in the 7th century BCE, but the famous structures whose ruins remain visible today date mainly from a period of construction in the 5th century BCE. The location of the Acropolis is closely tied with Athens' foundation myth. Supposedly, it was the site where Athena and Poseidon competed for the city's patronage. This connection gave the Acropolis a sacred aura, and it was considered the religious heart of the city. Thomas Byron, who was the seventh Earl of Elgin, may have undermined the government in order to carry out his actions. He was a British ambassador for the Ottoman government, which provided him with the Furman. That was <clears throat> that has since been unrecorded as a degree of the Sultan headed by the cipher Tugra. His political power was a factor in obtaining the Furman, and even with the limited details concerning the Furman's orders, he seems to have taken liberties that were not predicted by the Greeks. He may have taken his liberties to extremes far beyond what was considered by the government at the time. The Furman stated that Elgin's artists meet no opposition in walking, viewing, contemplating the pictures and buildings <coughs> they may wish to design or copy, or in fixing scaffolding around the ancient temple, or in modeling with chalk, or gypsum, the said ornaments and visible figures, or in excavating when they find it necessary in search of inscriptions among the rubbish, nor hinder them from taking away any pieces of stone with transcription, uh, inscription and figures. So Dr. The temple Jeanette. of Athena Nike was built on the remains of old fortifications from the Mycenaean era. Worship at the temple can be traced back to the 6th century BCE, but the building itself was destroyed during the Greco-Persian Wars a century later. It was rebuilt during the Peloponnesian War. Given that the name Athena Nike roughly means Athena of Victory, it was likely constructed in the hopes that Athens would win the war. Unusually, the temple depicts historical scenes of battles against the Persians instead of the more mythologically inclined art of other Greek buildings. The temple's priestess was chosen randomly among the Athenians and received a salary of 50 drachmae annually, along with skins and trophies from sacrificed animals. The Temple of Athena Nike was built on the remains of old fortifications from the Mycenaean era. Worship at the temple. The area where the Temple of Athena Nike was built offers a beautiful view of the southern shores of Attica. 
along with the ports of Piraeus and Phaleron. This noteworthy feature, as well as the Mycenae ruins nearby, were the basis for the assumption that Aegeus, the ninth king of the old Athenian dynasty, watched the sea from here in hopes of seeing his son Theseus return safe and sound from Crete. <clears throat> I'll let you read the rest of that. Right? That's good. Ooh, sorry. The Acropolis was built up over a long period, due in no small part to its partial destruction during the Greco-Persian Wars. It was in the 5th so century BCE, the though, that the Acropolis received its most significant improvements. This period was an extremely marbles, prosperous time um, for Athens, both financially and culturally. With a booming economy bolstered by trade them. and the Lavrion oh, silver mines, Pericles, the leader of Athens, financed a huge project to rebuild the citadel. He enlisted the help of renowned artists, like the sculptor Phidias, as well as the architects Ictinos and Callicrates. Together, they erected buildings like the Parthenon and the Propylia Gateway. Pericles' goal was to make the Acropolis into a glorious monument to the gods and to mortal Athenians. So my goal is the restitution of the marbles to Greece by an authorized house. And specifically, as noted in the assignment, um, the collections include 247 feet of the Parthenon frieze, almost half of the original, 15 of the original 19 metopes or metopes and 17 of the pedimental sculptures, four blocks of the frieze from the Nike temple, and one caryatid. So there used to be someone painting this amphora, but they're busy. Dr. Jeanette Greenfield, The Return of the Cultural Treasures, first published in 1989, second edition, 1998, Cambridge University Press, has this to say on the Furman. Um, this is a quote from her book, but I found it on, I found the, um, I found the quote on a different website called uh, ParthenonUK.com, and it's um, the British Committee for the Reunification of the Parthenon Marbles. So yeah, Dr. Jeanette Greenfield, her quote from the book, The Return of Cultural Treasures, says, although there has been debate to the extent of the Furman, the tip, I'm sorry, I'm going to start over. Although there has been debate as to the extent that the Furman empowered Lord Elgin, the real issue, in my view, centers around the fact that the original Furman was never produced by Elgin in the House of Commons. Par Ugh. <sighs> Can't walk and talk. Okay. Find a good view here. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Jeanette Greenfield, I'll get this right, I'll get this right. Okay. Dr. Jeanette Greenfield, in her highly regarded book, The Return of Cultural Treasures, first published in 1989, second edition, 1998, Cambridge University Press, has this to say on the Furman. Although there has been debate as to the extent that the Furman empowered Lord Elgin, the real issue, in my view, centers around the fact that the 
the original Furman was never produced by Elgin in the House of Commons Parliament Select Committee in 1816. Only a copy written from memory was produced. There is no direct documentary proof of the right of of the right to remove marbles, even regarding such documents as exist, there are arguments over the interpretation of the alleged wording, which would not have been stretched to justify destruction of the Parthenon. So Behind it, the Propylaia was the giant bronze statue of Athena Promachos, or Athena who fights on the front lines. That name was reflected in the spear and shield the statue held in its hands. It was erected in the mid-5th century BCE by the artist Phidias. According to an inscription, it took nine years to make and cost almost half a million drachmae. At approximately 10 meters tall, the statue was apparently so large that Pausanias claimed its helmet and spear tip could be seen from the sea near Cape Sunion, 60 kilometers away. The ornamentation on the statue's shield was engraved by the metalsmith, Nice. Got some worshippers over there. What's this? Greece priests and priestesses were either designated or elected from among citizens and clerical families. They performed sacred rituals on special occasions like festivals or when otherwise required. Priest houses are often linked with priesthoods, but priests did not actually live in them, preferring to stay in their own homes in the city's residential quarters. Instead, the main purpose of the priest's house was to provide priests with a space to carry out the rituals during specific days on the religious calendar. Priest's houses were considered to be sacred for the mundane activities of daily life, and priests had to perform purification rituals such as period of chastity before they were allowed to enter. some dates that I'm trying, I'm trying to recall the dates of um, the 7th Earl, is that 18, 1802 I believe, where where the Furman was. <laughs> The Arafuroi were young girls between the ages of 7 and 11 who were in charge of special rights. A list of four girls was drafted by the Assembly of Citizens, from which the High Magistrate, the Archon Basileus, chose two to serve as Arafuroi for the year. The girls lived in a house on the Acropolis. They were in charge of carrying sacred objects and weaving the peplos of Athena. The peplos was a sacred robe offered to Athena during Panathenea, a festival held in her honor. <clears throat> so the marbles have been missing, or not missing, they're at the, they're at a British museum. 
Um, but they've been missing from the Parthenon since Lord Elgin removed them. Um, In 1816. Let's see. I'm not already getting this information right. Okay, marbles are removed. That cipher to grah. Fuck. Keep going. It's taking too long. I feel like I'm playing on a PC. There we go, they wrecked them. There's some marbles taken from this. The Erechtheon was an atypical temple. It was dedicated not only to Athena Pelias, but also to Kekrops the mythical founder of Athens, his son Erechtheos, and even Poseidon, the sea god who challenged Athena for possession of the city. The temple was divided into sections. The eastern part housed a statue dedicated to Athena, while the western section jointly belonged to Poseidon and Erechtheos. Yeah, it was 1802. Duh. Meanwhile, okay. King Kekrop's grave was believed oh, to be under the Karyatic porch. Under the temple was a In crypt class. that was said to contain the sacred snakes of Athena. The snakes may have had a sweet tooth because the priestesses of Athena allegedly fed them honey cakes. Yeah, so some of the fragments were from the Erechtheum, the Karyatid. I'm not exactly sure what a Karyatid is. There are the priests. Hello, priests. Time code. Ten we're ten meters away. The Parthenon is one of the most well known buildings in the world and an enduring symbol of ancient Greek civilization. While it is located on the Acropolis, the building is not a traditional temple. It was built by the sculptor Phidias and the architects Callicrates and Ictinus as a great monument to the glory of the city of Athens. That glory is evident in its many carvings. One of the most carved... The Parthenon's decorations depict several mythological scenes. These include the birth of Athena, we got the marbles, baby. the patronage of Athens, the gods' battle with the giants, and the procession of the great Panathenaea. I want to go home. I climbed that. Ooh. Ah. Come on. I'm gonna take. <laughs> I'm gonna take those marbles myself. No. 
quiero. <laughs> okay, I didn't expect this. I didn't expect to actually be able to get up here. Alright, this is a good time to read. So, I'm gonna go back to the, um, the British Committee for the Reunification of the Parthenon Marbles and see what they have to say. I'm reading the case for the return. A generous offer by the Greek government made in 2000 continues with UNESCO's ICPRCP recommendations plus invitations for talks by Greece's Prime Minister and Minister of Culture in 2018. An offer that would be difficult to refuse. The Greek government has now proposed to the British government to put aside the question of ownership. Instead, the Greeks are inviting their colleagues at the British Museum to join them with the, aiming, with the aim of reuniting the surviving sculptures in one place in the Acropolis Museum that has been expressly built in order to house all the Parthenon sculptures. This offer has been proposed by a number of Greek ministers of culture and expressly stated by Foreign Minister George Papandreou, who gave evidence on 5th of June 2000 to the House of Common Culture, Media, and Sports Committee. Furthermore, Mr. Evangelos Venizelos, the Greek minister, pledged that when the Parthenon sculptures are returned, the Greek government will make sure that the Duveen galleries would always host Greek antiquities on loan for exhibitions. Greece would be willing to send rare and even newly discovered antiquities which have never been seen outside of Greece. <coughs> In June 2018, then the Minister of Culture, Lydia Koniordou, met with her UK counterpart, the Secretary of State, Media and Sport, Matt Hancock, and Under Secretary of State for Culture, Michael Ellis, to discuss the sculptures from the Parthenon. Minister Coney Andrew highlighted the cultural and ethical dimensions to, of the division of the Parthenon marbles, plus the recent recommendation by UNESCO's Intergovernmental Committee for promoting the return of cultural property to its countries of origin or its restitution in the case of illicit appropriation. ICPRCP, which took a clear stance on the highly debated issue of these unique sculptures earlier this month, following Ministers Koniarandu London Talks, eh, sorry, Prime Minister Tis Cypras also visited London at the end of June 2018 for, talk, for talks with Prime Minister Theresa May. And once again, the master of the division of the fragmented Parthenon marbles was raised. On the 20th of August 2018, Minister Konirodo wrote to Jeremy Wright UK's new Secretary of State for Culture, inviting him to Athens to begin new talks on the unifications of sculptures from the Parthenon. This goes on to talk about caring for the marbles, talks about the Parthenon symbol of Greek cultural heritage, Parthenon marbles, an integral part of the famous monument, the removal of the sculptural elements from the Parthenon, the legality of the acquisition and more recent developments. Um, and the link is, I'll put it below, um, parthenonuk.com forward slash about dash bcrpm forward slash the, the dash case dash for dash the return dash return. That doesn't, yeah. I'll just link it below.
so uh, okay Ooh, this is the cellar the Parthenon's inner chamber or cella contained a massive statue of Athena that was considered to be one of the sculptor Phidias's greatest masterpieces. The statue was chrysalophantine, a combination of gold ah, yeah. and ivory. To justify the steep cost of its construction, Pericles told Athenians that the statue was a gold reserve which could be disassembled in times of economic distress. The cella also allegedly the contained bank. a pool whose main purpose was to control the room's humidity, which helped preserve the statue's ivory. I hope you got some popcorn if you're watching. <clears throat> you better start over from the beginning and um, go to Mycenae, because we're going there next. And I'm going to get some popcorn, too. Because this is a lot of fun. History is cool. Oh, water. And architecture. Architecture is... Um, elegant is the word. Elegant. We got some Doric columns. Yum. So, what about... Lord Elgin. I haven't heard a word about him Athens yet. Athens' treasury was located in the park. Not from this Where it was person. believed to be protected by Athena herself. The treasury contained objects of great value, acquired from different conquests, as well as a mass of minted silver coins and... Pericles also decided to move the entirety of the Delian League's treasure to the Parthenon in 454 BCE. This was a great testament to Athens' power over the rest of Greece. The riches were divided into two parts, the Demosia, which belonged to the city, and the Hiera Cremita, which was dedicated to the goddess and only used for religious purposes. How do you say her name? Melina Mercori? Melina Mercori? Let's look around here real quick. Let's take it all in. Let's just observe the art. I'm gonna look something up and uh look at all these gold digital artifacts. Macquarie. Let's pronounce names.com. <laughs> Melina Mercuri. Got it. Okay. Pronounce names .com. <laughs> Melina Got it. Okay. Oh, there she is. No way. That's and crazy. And what did you think of the Acropolis? It truly That's is not... quite something, isn't it? A sacred sanctuary and an Jokes. architectural marvel, all in one. If That's you have any questions, Aspasia. don't hesitate to ask. 
I swear to God, she didn't have a name before. Not today. That's it. As you wish. Hopefully, we will see each other again soon. real are these real places how much of this is like fact one of our facts and evidence here old art and art emission point comment um, where do we go where should we go next can I leave a comment see the oracle should I I uh, check these other ones we'll go see the oracle the Olympic Games are coming up right or are they canceled I heard about baseball or the baseballs gonna be played in two states Nossus <laughs> see uh, Pericles. I think Pericles lives there. Uh, yeah, as you can tell, I'm really behind in all my classes because these haven't been there. Haven't been there, you know? Haven't been going to class again. Again, again, again. So, kind of stressful right now. I don't know who I'm talking to, but yeah, I know I'm talking to someone at this point, but uh, they're not commenting. Well, let's just do some philosophy. <laughs> Watching us through a feedback loop right now. Um, so Molina Mercori, Minister of Culture in 1981 to 1989 and 1993 through 1994, um, she increased Greece's demands for the return of the marbles and she was a big proponent in um, uh, creating the kind of discussions that are being had even now with the um, the committee. Alright. Let's see what she has to say. Where 
Welcome to the Gymnasium of the Kinosaries, one of the many places where philosophers came to enrich the mind and enlighten the spirit. Education held a very important place in Greek society. The most prominent educators were philosophers, whose teachings ranged from everyday rituals to the makeup of the universe. Once your tour is complete, come find me, Cosmetics and we can discuss thing. what you've learned. Farewell for now, wanderer. Akuma. Um, she also began... that's, um... Kori also began the project of restoring the Parthenon. Philosophy the comes from the Greek okay. word philosophia, or love of wisdom. This concept was in direct contrast with philochromatia, love of money, and philotemia, love of honor. As of the second half of the 5th century BCE, Athens was known as Greece's capital of philosophy. Due to the rise of democracy, there was an increasing need for education beyond the basic subjects of elementary school. Athenian citizens needed to be able to participate in various functions of the democratic state, such as being elected for office, proposing new laws, engaging in military decisions, or simply defending their rights. Philosophy comes from the Greek word philosophia, or love of wisdom. This concept was in direct contrast with philochromatia, love of money, my paper. and philotemia, love of honor. As of the second half of the 5th century BCE, Athens was known as Greece's capital of philosophy. Due to the rise of democracy, there was an increasing need for education beyond the basic subjects of elementary school. Athenian citizens needed to be able to participate in various functions of the democratic state, such as being elected for office, proposing new laws, engaging in military decisions, or simply defending their rights. So, I'm part of the project that Mercury fought so hard for was to request the return of the marbles. And not all of them come from the British Museum, the 7th Earl of Elgin, uh, Byron Thomas, Thomas Byron. Um, some of them are b architectural fragments from the Acropolis that have been placed in museums in Sweden, Germany, and the Getty Museum. Um, Some of those requests have been honored, and uh, the Parthenon was uh, intended to be completely restored by 1996 um, for the Olympics that Athens campaigned for but didn't get. The Coca-Cola Olympics was 1996 in Atlanta. So after that didn't happen, they... Um, wanted the Parthenon to be restored by 2004 and it's had another major restoration in 2012 so it just seems like there's constantly pushing back more restorations um, and now it's the Elgin marbles that we're really requesting Noi for the new Acropolis Museum it's across from the Theater of Dionysus uh, and it's waiting for the marbles. Originally, Athens had no official school buildings for higher education. Sophists and philosophers taught either in private homes or in public spaces like the theater. To recruit young pupils for long-term curricula, they also held classes in Gymnasia, where young Athenians... The Sinosarges was a sanctuary to Heracles, located in the south suburb of Athens. At the beginning of the 4th century BCE, Antisthenes used this sanctuary as a teaching spot for his school of philosophy, the aptly named Cynicism. Any free 
citizen was allowed to involve themselves in the Athenian democratic process. However, to truly influence the flow of politics, their speech and rhetoric skills had to be impeccable. As a result, many sophists taught subjects like logic, reason, and eloquence. These were meant to help students achieve erite, or excellence. But this right, specific concept of excellence so was often challenged, especially you by won't be other hearing from me, but For example, Plato, the game Socrates, goes on. and Isocrates For sure. preferred a more moral approach For sure. and argued that rhetoric should be used okay, as bye. a means to serve the greater good. Socrates and Plato went even further, declaring that philosophy and wisdom were not only useful tools, but also ethical virtues. Any free citizen was allowed to involve themselves in the Athenian democratic process. However, to truly influence the flow of politics, their speech and rhetoric skills had to be impeccable. As a result, many sophists taught subjects like logic, reason, and eloquence. These were meant to help students achieve arete, or excellence. But this specific concept Ancient Greek philosophy was multidisciplinary in nature. In addition to wisdom and logic, philosophers also studied and taught math, geometry, music theory, and even medicine. For example, the philosopher Prodicus wrote a treatise called On Human Nature, where he outlined various explanations on human physiology. Philosophy's influence was also great enough to affect medicine. Hippocratic physicians were known to incorporate philosophical ideas into their work, and the treatise on airs seems to be influenced by pre-Socratic theories on air being the first principle of the universe. The famed philosopher Socrates had an ambiguous relationship with sophists. In Plato's dialogues, Socrates is portrayed as being in constant opposition with the famous sophists of his time. Aristophanes' comedy, The Clouds, meanwhile, depicts Socrates as a sophist himself, constantly demanding payment for his teachings. Socrates was in fact very poor and made no money off his teachings. He also differed from the sophists in that while they only taught aristocratic youths, Socrates taught everyone, regardless of station. Unfortunately, his controversial ideas and practices did not sit well with the city of Athens, and he was eventually tried for impiety. <laughs> Philosophy was not only a collection of ideas, but a way of life. According to philosopher Pierre Hadot, his ancient counterparts had a daily regime of spiritual exercises to combat their passions, doubts, and illusory beliefs. These exercises included meditation on death, contemplation of nature, or speaking with a friend or mentor. Philosophers also followed specific dress codes and diets. They were also part of a community of masters and students. These communities were created and strengthened in schools. Plato founded such a school in the early 4th century BCE when he purchased a property in a grove just outside of Athens. The school was designed to groom students into philosopher citizens who could eventually rule the city in a measured and fair manner. It followed its own rules and was open to both male and female disciples. I can tell by the crease in your brow that you're already puzzling over the new things you've learned. Don't be embarrassed. Even the wisest among us need to ask questions before they search for answers. Is there anything else you'd like to do? You wish to test your wisdom? Very well. Let's see how you compare to the great philosophers. The first question is an easy one. 
What does philosophia mean? Logic was a large part of philosophical teachings, but the word philosophia did not refer to it directly. Keep trying. Philopimia was the love of honor. Try again. What does philosophia mean? There was a word for the love of money, but it was philochrimatia, not philosophia. Try a different answer. What does philosophia mean? Correct. Philosophia referred to the love of wisdom. Time for the next question. The Kinosaries was a sanctuary dedicated to which Greek hero? Correct. It was the mighty Heracles. Now, for the last question. Which play by Aristophanes portrayed Socrates as a sophist? Aristophanes' The Birds was a lovely play, but it did not feature Socrates. Try another answer. The Wasps was a comedy that mocked Athenian courts of law, but had no appearances from Socrates. Try again. Yes, The Clouds was a comedy that portrayed the famous philosopher as a greedy sophist. Plato even believed that this caricature contributed to his mentor's eventual trial and execution. Well done, Wanderer. Even Socrates would be impressed by the depths of your wisdom. As you wish, Wanderer. Safe travels.